Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I'd like to thank the camera. Let me back here. Um, I was surprised after all these years to find out that there's still only been two or three. Um, <laughs> hey, I am almost seventy. Yeah. You did, you did all the clock here on the front and front. There was a big deal made of it. Are you doing a lot of that here now, or? Has, well, due to my advanced age. <laughs> has, has your advanced age cut down? Uh, it's are cutting down them a little bit because we are a little worried about the osteoporosis. You know, it's interesting. We don't have a ton of sense in the sense of, you know, Buffy. There was a few sense in the pilot. There was a crash in the wall, which they would not let me do, which I still don't understand what I couldn't do. Something about insurance or uh, um, but um, so far, the, the, the trickiest stunt I've had is uh, standing next to very tall Christopher Blaha and Mike Coulter and trying to look like I'm not seven. Um, uh, so far, it's only been kind of running and chasing. So we don't have, you know, this is based, she's not saving the world. So she's just trying to save herself. So, But I do get to hold a gun a lot, which is cool, because Buffy never got a gun. And what brought you back to us after all these years? You know, it's so interesting. I, I definitely, and I think most of you know, I mean, I was very burnt out after Buffy. It was exhausting. It took me from, essentially, I was 18 on the pilot, and I was 24 and married, you know, when we finished. And I had never had time. I had never, you know, that show was my life. I was doing movies on the hiatus weekend, you know, and I, I sort of needed to explore and live that different lifestyle. And I traveled and, and worked with amazing actors. Andy Garcia, Alex Baldwin, Brendan Fraser, Forrest Whitaker. I mean, I said, Lee Pace. It was sort of this great learning experience, and then I started watching a lot of television. And I was always in these foreign countries, and I would get the shows on DVD. And I started to realize that all of the amazing roles for women were on television. And I was spoiled by Buffy because I thought that's the way it was everywhere, and it's not. And you know, I started to watch Damages, and I started to watch. I mean, it's all these kind of amazing female their shows, and it was something that was always in the back of my mind. And then. Once I had my daughter, I realized that I was done living in a mass lifestyle. And although it works for some actors, I want to be home. I want to put her to bed and get up with her in the morning. And I want to be there for her first day of school. And nothing offers that more than television. And what's been so interesting for me getting back into it was I didn't realize how much I missed it. How much I missed the excitement of getting a new episode and doing something different and seeing the same people and the family environment. And I think if I hadn't had the time away, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate the experience that I'm appreciating now. But that could be my advanced age, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, on your right, Hop, I'm immensely on your right. Um, kind of a nerdy, technical, acting question. Uh, when you're, for example, playing Siobhan, do you have the luxury of playing her all of her scenes in one day or the typical shooting day you have to go back and forth? Oh, I go one day I did five in one day. I would do I did old Brid I did a flashback Bridget, flashback Siobhan, current Siobhan, I did four and then current Bridget. Um, sometimes I go back and forth when we're doing the twin scenes. There have been instances where I've gone back and forth within that one scene three or four times. Um, we it can't really make our day that way. And while it would certainly be, we, we do try. There are certain days where I can play Siobhan all day or play Bridget, but not usually. And how do you get along with your body double? How, how many body doubles do you have? And the body being driven crazy is definitely fun. You know what? Right now, um, on the title, I had two. And right now I have one, her name is Ellie, and she's um, a singer. She's never thought about acting. And it's just been this really fun experience for her, and it freaks people out because um, we really do look, our face, like our jaw, we don't, it's really interesting, we don't look alike when we see us next to each other, but for some reason, like the jaw and the ear, it's really similar. And um, she's really, it's fun because she's enjoying the process too, so we're sort of discovering it together. Uh, I guess a quick follow-up for the producers is sort of an obvious question. I'm sure the answer is no. Uh, is there any chance that Joss Whedon might direct an episode to her that you guys reach out to him or has he in fact sort of reached out to you? Not yet, no. I think he's a little busy making a superhero movie in the moment. <laughs> Sarah, over here to your left, um, can you confirm that you'll be uh, doing a, a guest spot on all my children before it goes off the air on ABC? I can say, officially confirm, that I will be doing a guest spot on all my children. Um, when I heard that the show was canceled, I, 
I don't know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't understand. Like, forget. It just doesn't make sense to me. And um, I called Judy Bly Wilson, who's the casting director and has been since I was there, and I said I want to do something. And I was very specific. I don't want to be Kendall, that Alicia's role, and uh, but I just wanted to be a part of it. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. Um, so we can take suggestions. Um, but I will be doing one day. Yeah, I'm excited. So 